In this video, I will be discussing about binary trees. This is the second video in the tree series. In the previous video, I introduced tree data structures and the different terminologies of trees along with the type of trees. One of those types was binary tree. So let's discuss that in detail here. So binary tree is a tree in which each element has at most two children. So either it can have no child or one child or at max two child. So if all the nodes of the tree satisfies this property, then we can say that the tree is a binary tree. Because at max only two child can be there. So the usual naming convention is left child and right child. So these are some of the examples of the binary trees. So in the first case, Z is the left child and K is the right child. In the second tree, A has only one child and Z has no child. So if you see all the nodes of the tree either have two child or one child or no child. So these three trees are binary trees. Now let's see what are the different types of binary trees that we have. So we have five binary trees. Let's discuss these one by one. So first we have full binary tree. So full binary tree is a tree in which every node has either zero children or two children. So I have these three trees. So in the first case, we can see every node has either two child or zero child. So A has two children, B also has two children, H has two children, K, P, L and Z all have zero children. So this is a full binary tree. Similarly, in the second case, we can see A has two child, D and H also have two child, Z has also two child and all the leaf nodes have zero child. So this is also a full binary tree. And in the third case, we can see H has only one child. So this one is not a full binary tree. Then the next type of binary tree is complete binary tree. So complete binary tree is a tree in which all the levels are completely filled except the last level. And in the last level, all the nodes are as left side as possible. So let's check the first tree. Zero level is full. Level 1 is also full, level 2 is also full, so every node has two child and in the level 3 it is not full but since it is the last level all the nodes are as left side as possible. So this is a complete binary tree. In the second tree, in the last level this k node is at the left side as possible. So this is also a complete binary tree. But in the third tree, in the last level this p node is there but this is not as left as possible because this space is empty. So this third tree is not a complete binary tree. Now let's see the third category of the binary trees. Third type is perfect binary tree. Perfect binary tree is that tree in which all the internal nodes have two children and all the leaf nodes are at the same level. So if we see the first tree, all the leaf nodes are at the same level and all the internal nodes have two children. So internal nodes are those nodes which are not the leaf nodes. So this is a perfect binary tree. But in the second case, K is a leaf node, L is a leaf node, B and C are also leaf nodes. But they are a different level. These are at level 2 and K is at level 3. So this is not a perfect binary tree. Then the next type that we have is balanced binary tree. So in balanced binary trees, Height of the left and the right subtrees of every node may differ by at most one. So if we check the first tree, all the leaf nodes have a height difference of zero. For node H, left subtree has a height of one and right subtree also has a height of one. So the difference is zero. For node D, left subtree has a height of two and right subtree has a height of one. So the difference is one. For node A, left subtree as a height of 3 and right subtree has a height of 2 so the difference is 1 for node z both left and right subtree have a height of 1 so the difference is 0 so for all the nodes height difference between the left and the right subtree is less than or equal to 1 so this is a balanced binary tree if we check for second tree also for node h height difference is 1 for node d height difference is 1 and for all the other nodes also high difference is less than or equal to 1. So this is also a balanced binary tree. 
but if we check for the third tree height difference for node h is 1 height difference for node d 2 minus 0 so height difference between left and right subtree for node d is greater than 1 so since node d doesn't satisfy this property so this tree is not a balanced binary tree now let's check the next type of binary tree degenerate binary tree so in this type of tree every parent node has only one child node so if you check the first tree all the nodes have only one child so this is a degenerate binary tree in the second tree also each node has only one child so this is also a degenerate binary tree but in the third tree node z has two child so this tree is not a degenerate binary tree now this type of tree is also known as pathological binary tree now let's see how we can represent a binary tree so there are two ways of representation a binary tree first we can use a array form of representation which is also known as sequential representation and second is dynamic node representation or a linked list kind of representation so first we discuss array representation so let's say we are given this tree and we have to represent it in an array form so first step is we have to take an array the size of which will be equal to the 2 raised to power h plus 1 minus 1 so this h is the height of the tree so height of the tree is the height of the root node so if you check height of the root node here height is equal to 3 because it is equal to the maximum number of edges that it is far apart from the leaf node so if we calculate size of the array it will be 3 plus 1 4 minus 1 which is 15. now the zeroth node of that array will be taken by the root the left child will be at index 2 into i plus 1 and right child will be at index 2 into i plus 2 and parent node will be at index i minus 1 by 2. now let's try to understand this so i've taken this array which has 15 elements so root node will be at zeroth index so root node is m so at zero location we enter m then we come to the first level and we scan left to right then the first node is p now p is the left child of m and m is at zeroth position so the left child is 2 into 0 plus 1 so it is 1 and right is 2 into 0 plus 2 so p will be at index 1 and q will be at index 2 now child of p are a and d now let's check the left child of p so index of p is 1 so i is 1 for p so left child is at third index and right child is at fourth index so left child of p which is a will come at third index and right child of p which is d will come at fourth index now let's pick i equal to 2 node q so left child will be at fifth index and right child will be at sixth index at fifth index we put b and at sixth index we put c and now we have c so c is at index 6 so we set i equal to 6 it doesn't have left child so right child will be 2 into 6 plus 2 so it will be 14 so w will come at 14th location so this is how you can represent this tree in the form of array so if we have to check the parent for any of the nodes we can simply check i minus 1 by 2 index so let's say we want to check the parent node for w so parent will be 14 minus 1 by 2 so it will be at 6 so this is the parent if you have to check the parent for c it will be 6 minus 1 by 2 so 2 is q so in this manner we can find parent of any node so now there are some advantages and disadvantages of using this form of representation let's see what are those so first pro or advantage is it is very easy to traverse this form of representation of a tree because we can go to the left child of any node by this formula and we can go to the right child by this formula and we can simply check the parent node by this formula so it is very easy to traverse in this array also it is very easy to implement so that can also be counted as an advantage because we simply have to take an array and then we can simply check the left and the right child by calculating this 2 into i plus 1 or 2 into i plus 2 but this form of representation has some disadvantages also 
the first disadvantage is that we need to know what is the maximum node count beforehand because we are representing this in the form of array and the array size we need to know beforehand so it is static in nature so the insertion and deletion is not very simple so that is one obvious disadvantage that we have here the second disadvantage is that it has inefficient space utilization so we can see here these nodes are empty so if this tree is very large then you can see that how much space will be unutilized in this array so this form of representation is good for a perfect binary tree or a complete binary tree because in those form of trees there will be efficient utilization of the array but for all the other kind of trees there will be a lot of empty space so this is not a very suitable choice for those type of trees so the second form of representation that we have is linked list or the dynamic representation so in this form of representation for each of the node we define it in the form of a structure so that structure comprises of the value the left pointer and the right pointer so this m node is basically split into three parts inside is the val this is the left and this is the right so the left pointer is pointing to the p node which is also comprised of three parts and the right is pointing to q then q is also pointing to b then it is pointing towards c then it is pointing towards w so this is how we can represent it using dynamic node so every node will be comprised of three parts the left pointer the right pointer and the value that is contained in that node the left will be pointing to the left node the right will be pointing to the right node so this is a dynamic node representation or a linked representation because there are links to the left and the right node now this form of representation has many advantages the first advantage is it allows for dynamic node allocation so if we have to add any node let's say at b the left pointer can simply point to the new node or the right pointer can point to other node so it is very easy to add or delete any node in this form of representation so insertion and deletion is quite easy but the disadvantage is that we need to save these two pointers left and right for each of the nodes so some extra space is needed in this form of representation and the second disadvantage is that assessing a particular node is not easy so if you have to check what is the parent of b then there is no straightforward manner like we had in the array form of representation because there is no pointer which is going to the parent of the node so this is the widely used representation of a tree now once we have understood both these forms of representation let's try to implement this in c++ so all the code that i'll be showing is available in my github repository link of that is available here and as well as in the description now let's see the implementation so first i'm showing the array form of representation so we have seen that total number of nodes that are required in this form of representation is 15 so i've taken a care array which is of size 15 and i've initialized all the elements to null at the zeroth location of the tree array i have entered m which is the root node then i have two functions set left and set right in which i am passing the tree array the value of the node and the parent node index in the set left function i'm using that formula that 2 into i plus 1 will be the index of the left node so in the left node i'm setting the value val and similarly in the set right function i'm using the formula 2 into i plus 2 and then i'm setting the val in the tree index so here we can see that for the zeroth node left child is p and the right child is q for the first node left child is a and the right child is d for the second node left child is b and the right child is c and for the sixth node right child is w so in this way i've created the tree and in the end i'm printing all the nodes from 0 to 15 and if any of the array entry is empty i print a dash so it will show what are the empty spaces that were there in this array so let's see the output of this program so we can see here the output is m p q a d b c then there are seven empty spaces and in the last index we have w the seven empty entries are for the child of a d b and the left child of c so since those child are not present they are empty in this form of representation now let's have a look at the linked representation of this tree 
So I've created a struct node in which I have a care well and two pointers left and right. I've created a constructor here which takes a care value and it assigns it to the struct val and the left and right pointers are pointing to null. So in the first step, I create a root node and I call the constructor with the value of m and the left and right both are pointing to null. Then in the next step, then I'm assigning root of left with the value of new node p. So this is root of left. I'm assigning new node p. Then in the next step, root of right, new node q. So root of right to new node q. Next step is root of left of left will be new node of a. Root of left is this. We are assigning new node a here. And then root of left of right is new node d. So root of left is p. So right of this will point to new node d. Next step is root of right of left will point to new node b. So root of right is q. Now left of this will be new node b. And then root of right of right new node c. This is root of right. So it will point to new node c. And in the last root of right of right of right to new node w. Root of right is q and right of q is c. So it will be w here. So that is how a linked form of representation of a tree works. So that was all for this video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.